she, where she, she, she brought uh, uh, influential contributions and uh, many other th subjects in probability. Uh, she is also well known for uh, her activity uh, in the framework of this agreement uh, between France and Brazil. And this uh, talk is uh, one uh, example of realization, but this has a long history. And I uh, remember the first time I came to IMPA, uh, we, we had a lot of interesting conversation in probability, but not only, also in mathematical statistics, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So uh, the, the title of the talk today is Metastability on Stochastic Dynamics, a brief review and some new results. Thank you, Francis. I want to thank the organizers for this kind invitation that uh, gives me the opportunity to talk a little bit about a project that uh, I like very much and in collaboration with Alexandre Godelier and Paolo Milanese. So this has been done between uh, Rio and Marseille. Um, started long ago. I will tell a little bit maybe as it comes. So uh, on the technical side, uh, I, I mean, this is going to be a general lecture, not technical. On the technical side, uh, there will be some overlap for the probabilists who were in the session yesterday with Alex talk, and I apologize, but um, I think, uh, I mean, it would be interesting to talk about uh, French-Brazil collaboration. My other current works are with collaborations from, collaborators from Switzerland or Italy, so it wouldn't be, or Brazil, of course, so it wouldn't be too proper. I, am, I apologize, I hope it will not be. So we think of metastability. This is extremely frequent uh, phenomena close to a phase, trans, a phase transition of first order. What we, we think of first, trans, first order phase transition when you have a discontinuity. There is some, something which you see that changes, uh, changes drastically, like uh, from liquid to solid, uh, vapor to liquid. Uh, uh, that's uh, what you independently of uh, technical definition of first order phase transition. So it's quite often that, uh, so you are in a, in a situation where there are two phases, say liquid, solid, and uh, thermodynamic parameters, the temperature, the pressure, uh, are changed in such a way that you were in state in phase X and you should go to Y, but sometimes you don't go, you go to something which looks very much as x, which I draw that picture as x prime, um, and uh, which looks like a different phase, looks like x, but it's not. So this is the typical thing of metastability, and uh, very classical examples are uh, supercooled liquid. That's the one that I think most of us encounter with the beer in the freezer. Sometimes you take the beer and uh, you want to open, and as soon as you, it was perfectly liquid, but you go to open the bottle or you touch a little bit and it uh, gets solid. Eh? Um, super saturated vapors, uh, you under fixed temperature and uh, compress. Sometimes it stays as a vapor when it would be already uh, to go liquid. And the other one, which uh, is going to be, is the motivation for this somehow, because it's our work has to deal with this situation. You think of a ferromagnet uh, in the region where you have to, to have a phase transition. So imagine that you have uh, prepared your system with magnetized, say, negatively. You have a negative magnet field. And uh, it's there in the negative, negatively magnetized. But then you slowly decrease the field, goes to zero. So this is age, this is magnetization. And um, 
you still decrease and you go to age very small, positive, and uh, this magnetization still keeps negative. It increases a little bit, but still negative, and this remains for a while until if you keep increasing the field, at some point there is a coercive field and it will jump to positive magnetization. Of course, there is something on the other side also. It's called the hysterosis loop. So this kind of thing has, uh, is somehow the motivation. So of course, very classical thing, very old, but it's the motivation and our, our work has to do with this one uh, in a way that I will explain. So these are, <coughs> so this uh, uh, X prime I already explained. Uh, and uh, the main point is that this X prime, which looks as equilibrium, uh, it's not truly equilibrium. That beer shouldn't be liquid already, maybe, with the temperature that it is. And some small, small perturbation, which could be just some stochastic perturbation, some um, external perturbation, makes it quickly get uh, change. That's the kind of thing. I like very much this quote of uh, Gavo and Schumann, who studied a lot about metastability. Let us call it the gentlest of all non-equilibrium uh, phenomena. It's really very gentle, looks like equilibrium. And that's very good in some sense, it depends on your point of view, or very bad in another, it depends for what you are interested because Okay, so the two questions that one usually wants to understand is what it means this branch? Can you quantify it in some situations? Not that we saw there. And the other question is what's the lifetime? How long it will take for this X prime to change to Y in that picture? So these are, well, uh, metastability is observed in uh, huge amount of uh, areas. Of course, physics, that's uh, very natural. In biology, it's very important. Sometimes you have some forms of proteins which are uh, in metastable situation and they are interesting. So sometimes it's very good to have a very long lifetime because you want your metastable state to be used in life. No? Uh, in uh, nanomaterials, it's uh, uh, extremely common, so science of materials, of course, in, not only in nanomaterials, but also in the classical um, playing with uh, alloys, it was an important uh, thing. So these are situations where you want the lifetime to be large because you want to use that object. Well, in economy, it may be a little bit more, some bubbles sometimes look. Um, and of course, it, mathematically, it plays a role when you are thinking of algorithms that you want to converge to the equilibrium, but they face metastable states, uh, and then you would like to avoid them. Maybe you have come out with a clever algorithm that avoids or make this lifetime short. So these are the cases where you want the lifetime to be short. You want to avoid, no? because you want your algorithm to converge to the proper thing. So it's, uh, so let's go to the very old, so 19th century. And uh, somehow I think it's the first description which I can find of uh, this. And it's uh, by Van der Waals and Maxwell in around 1870. And it has to do with the vapor liquid transition where you temperature is fixed and you are putting more pressure. You start with a vapor, you're putting more pressure, this vapor gets super saturated or it undergoes a usual transition. So that's a very naive and simple thing nowadays, but as Etienne was saying, we look nowadays with what we know, but this was 1870. So um, Van der Waals starts with this equation of a perfect gas. P is the pressure, V is specific volume, say, one over the density. So you think of uh, the volume divided by the number of molecules, and T is the temperature. K is a constant, so-called Boltzmann constant. And to this trivial equation, he just adds two 
makes a small perturbation. You add something which has to do with uh, the attraction between the molecules, and you subtract something from the volume because each molecule occupies a certain volume. So you subtract this. So you have these equations. Now you think that T temperature is fixed, and you want to change to look at P and V. No? You want to increase V and C. So you have these so-called van der Waals isotherms. No, they are there, drawn more or less. And uh, what happens is that there is a T below which you have this kind of picture, which is, of course, physically wrong. You have some situation here where the V is increasing. That means the density is decreasing, and the P is increasing. It's clearly nonsense from physical side. So, well, I mean, uh, Maxwell comes out with a proposal. The correct thing which should happen is not, uh, it doesn't make sense, that picture, of course, in physics, and what happens in physics is true, happens, no? So what should happen is that uh, you have this, uh, this line which is put at when at the place where the two areas are the same, above and below. And this is from thermodynamic considerations about the work done. So, and he says, okay, here is uh, where you have an inhomogeneous uh, system. You have some part which is vapor. Now say you are coming from there. Uh, so some part which is vapor, some part which is some bubbles of liquid. Okay, so that's the Maxwell proposal. And then, of course, you ask, okay, that's okay. But then if you observe, there was a small piece which was physically nonsense. There are two, place, two pieces which still make sense for these branches. Now this and the other one. So let's call maybe this is the metastable branch. It has to do with metastability. You go a little bit further, like with the hysteresis. So that was the... This is something which is, of course, very, uh, it's a mean field. You think everybody interacts with everybody in the same way. You, that's it. But that was this proposal, OK? That, uh, this description for the branch. And it's a very partial justification. So looking a little bit farther, two problems with this. First, that. Um, of course, there was not a rigorous justification for all this. And um, mean field is not something which is justified from the point of view of uh, true, true systems. So uh, this, um, this, these curves uh, were put at the, in the frame of statistical mechanics through the Katz potentials, and uh, I quote here the work of uh, lebovitz penhorst because they made the limit. To the, this uh, proposal was done in another paper first of Katz and Nuremberg. So what they figure out is that there is a way to see these van der Waals curves in statistical mechanics. In the sense, there are two limits. First, you take uh, uh, a limit, thermodynamic limit, like you make another limit, and you get to this thing. So there is a relation between this stuff and statistical mechanics. That's one thing. So in principle, you could try to understand about these branches. And, uh, but it's clear from mathematical results proven later that this analytical continuation uh, doesn't happen when you have a short range interaction. And this is, uh, so it's a peculiarity of the mean field. This is, was proven first by Isakov, and then made very clear, more general, and see how it appears as you take the second limit in lebowitz penhorst when you go to the mean field limit in a beautiful paper of uh, Sasha Friedel and Charles Pfister. Uh, so this is one, one thing just to relate with this theory. The other, the other thing is that, uh, I mean, they somehow want to treat metastability as a problem for equilibrium, but this is not. So that's another thing, and so it's important to think of dynamics. 
And, uh, but one should consider that there were already some aspects of the uh, dynamical aspects in Maxwell and also in other uh, uh, people later on. So Maxwell comments on this and uh, I, I call some older, some more recent, uh, recent but old reference that sees this in Maxwell also. Okay, so, but now we want to go to, to dynamics. And uh, so look, thinking of dynamics and still referring to very old, uh, to the early results, let us go to, there is, oops. Uh, Van Hoff, what's happening here with my point uh, here? So uh, Van Hoff was, I think, the first Nobel Prize in chemistry. So he was in, I mean, he was a chemist, so he was, chemical reaction rate, and uh, he proposes uh, this, so also Arrhenius. So this is called the Arrhenius law, no? So if you have the rate at which a reaction will happen, we will have two components. The, we have, uh, the main thing is e, the probability that it happens, so it it's e to the minus the energy divided by the temperature, what's there. And there is a number A in front, uh, so-called prefactor, because, so you interpret that this is the, this exponential is the probability to happen to see this. And, but this has to happen with a certain number of times because it's a probability, not always it will succeed the reaction. So there is this A which is uh, something not uh, well defined, uh, very nice, but it should, uh, very precise, but it should, uh, it should reflect this. So one over R would be the reaction time, the average reaction time, so-called Arrhenius law. So, and the first derivation, rigorous derivation of this comes with Kramers in 1940. There is also this other work, so it's usually referred to, I know, don't know how if I pronounce properly, Iri, Iri. Maybe, I don't know, doesn't matter. Uh, so cameras look at um, something which is already, let us say, mesoscopic. So something which we uh, nowadays see it is very simple. You know, in the sense that you already put a stochastic uh, process which is a, a diffusion. So you have a Brownian motion with a small epsilon here. So that means you have a large viscosity and you have a double well potential. So which reflects this reaction that you want to happen. So in this double well potential, say in one dimension, this is Kramer's in one dimension. So you he can do this completely in detail. And you can see that the time, expected time to go from say one minimum A to overcome the barrier is computed by this. This is using uh, Dirichlet problem. So he knows exactly and knows this K uh, prefactor, so it's a proof of that one in a different context where you already start with something which is not microscopic. Okay, the, uh, this has uh, many developments, of course, since I'm not going to focus much on this part, let me just quote a few references because I'm not going to go back much to this. Um, it has been generalized to higher dimensions and this is a very important work of uh, Fred and Wenzel theory, and uh, many people worked on this, but, and also in infinite dimension, when you have uh, SPDs, uh, more general noises, noises which are not Gaussian, also has been treated. So there is a huge thing, and, but when you go on these uh, large deviations, uh, Fred and Wenzel theory, you lose control of the K, because it's a uh, logarithmic equivalence. And uh, to look at uh, these prefactors in a good, in a more precise way, uh, there is, a, in, in one dimension, this was simple because the Dirichlet problem is simple. Uh, this was uh, very important to work in the, uh, this century already, uh, in 2000, Ekhoff, and then uh, I just quoted the first paper here, Bouvier, Ekhoff, uh, Gayard, and Klein. Um, so they develop the potential theoretical tools which give you, uh, which give you good estimates on K. But so just to 
comment a little bit on this side of the problem, which is a little bit far from what we are going to see on the, on the side of uh, S, uh, stochastic differential equations, where the noise is put in your problem uh, in this kind of way. I go back to what we were started, so somehow. It's related to um, uh, statistical mechanics. So the, let us, I think the first rigorous proposal to look at uh, metastability as a truly dynamical phenomenon and to give a mathematical description um, is by Lebowitz and Perroz. And um, so they consider a time evolution which has an equilibrium measure mu, which is, say, Gibbs measure. And uh, they propose to describe the metastable states as restricted measures. So you take your equilibrium measure mu and restrict the condition to certain subsets of your phase space, which you call R, restricted, okay? And certain R's would reflect what you expect from a metastable state. So their proposal is, it contains three things. The R should have only one thermodynamic phase. So R is in fact uh, small in this sense, but the time to exit from R is very big. This time average uh, make, made in the average, expected. Yeah. And the point is that once you escape from R, since R has a small measure for the equilibrium, it will make a long time to come back, though it will come. <laughs> As a chance, it will take a long time to come back to R, okay? So Lebowitz and Perrault applied this to the vapor liquid transition in the case of Katz potential that we were talking. They made a concrete model. I mean, they, they made it so it fits within statistical mechanics, this description, in this sense. Uh, this was uh, very soon after their work extended to the kinetic is a model by uh, Capocaccia, Cassandro, and Olivieri. So there is this idea of a Gibbs measure restricted to small subsets which have some sort of bottleneck effect. That's the picture, general picture of, say, paradigma of metastability. Uh, so I, I just want to comment that uh, here that there are other, I mean, there are comments that I already made. There are other, you can think of these equilibrium measures, these condition measures, there are other, other candidates also. And one of them, which turns out to be very interesting, is not all quasi-stationary measures. I don't define here precisely what it is. So uh, quasi-stationary measures are candidates to metastable states. Um, but in some cases, they are. So you can think of a quasi-stationary measure sometimes is when you take your process and condition to something not to happen. And you keep condition and keep condition, take the limit, and you, if you have something in the limit, it's called the Yaglon limit, this guy might be, in some cases, this is a good candidate, and this is, um, has been uh, uh, exploited by some people. I think uh, the, uh, I quoted two important cases here. There is some work of Niclo which points into this, um, so it's good, fits into French. Zero, and uh, Alessandra Bianchi and Alex uh, Godelier, which was when they were doing this, uh, they were doing this uh, paper, or they had just done, uh, but this was much before this date because it takes a long time sometimes for papers to be published. And uh, Alex was uh, here visiting IMPA, and then uh, I, but very happy because somehow I see that there is a window out of what I was stuck since 97 talking with Schoeman about this ferromagnetic thing which I was at later on. Okay, so there, this. So um, the basic uh, point that if we want to think of uh, uh, metastability, purely dynamical, so there are two things to, to keep in mind. Uh, there are two 
very different scales, time scales. One which is, which I call thermalization, which is the time when you start your process somewhere, it goes quickly to something which is called a metastable state. So it equilibrates very quickly, thermalizes into something, which is the X prime that I said there. And uh, the other thing is the time it will stay in this state, which is the lifetime of the thing. So there are these two scales which should be very different. Thermalization in the metastable state should be much faster than the other one. Okay, so that's the, the thing to keep in mind. And uh, having this in mind, we propose something just to make it mathematically. So there are these two scales, they are very small, but what does it mean one is much smaller than the other? So if you want to give a description which sort of, you know, mathematicians might be okay, okay, you take a limit and this goes to zero and then you get something. So we put a limit. So take our process and put a parameter in our process. So there is a family of process. So this parameter might mean many things. No? So it's, we describe the metastable through a limit, a limit procedure, so not necessarily gives a precise description of the metastable state, gives an approximate uh, description. But okay, so you have this, so you should think that what I'm going to tell happens for a certain k, I'm going to take a limit in k, k is large. So you have in this state, you have two measures, two probability measures that I call mu meta, mu equilibrium, just to say metastable and equilibrium. And there are these scales of, of time, time scales, theta k and gamma k, such that theta k is much smaller than gamma k, and you look your process in the usual way a statistician looks, the usual way a uh, probabilist looks, a uh, ergodic theory looks. You take a, a small uh, interval of time of length theta k, take the time average, see where it's going. So delta there is just the Dirac measure. So I just, an observable, I average the observable in the orbit, from time t to time t plus theta k and divide by theta k. So just a probability valued process. This process should converge in the sense that uh, stochastic process to a jump process. That's the message. So <coughs> there is a time tau k, which is very large. Uh, it will come that's very large. And up to almost tau k, you are very close to mu meta. And then you are in equilibrium. And this tau k, uh, uh, properly normalized by gamma k, it's of order gamma k, it converts to an exponential distribution. That means the distribution which has no memory. It's an unpredictable thing. That's this what you see. That this transition is um, all of a sudden is quite fast. That's a, a proposal. I mean, there are many many similar things. So this is a long ago. And uh, a lot of uh, many similar ideas uh, and this kind of thing has been developed in many different ways by many authors and this is not a complete survey so I'm not going to, to refer to all possible directions that this kind of thing has been developed. Uh, there are uh, monographs on this so I, I and I am, of course, uh, happy to talk with anyone. Okay, it has been developed in many. I want to focus on our example, which is the easy model. So, because I told that uh, we want to discuss something about ferromagnetism. So, the easy model is a um, very old model, since 1925 at least was the first uh, uh, the paper. So you think that on each side of yours, uh, we are doing in, in two dimension. Of course, this model is more complicated in high dimension, but say in two dimension, that's in two dimension. So in each side of Z2, you have a spin which could be a plus or a minus. So you have two orientations for your magnet, plus or minus. Um, and you have an energy. So they interact, the spin at X and Y, they interact in this way that uh, this is the 
the energy function, so uh, they prefer to stay similar because then this will give a plus, plus one, plus one, or minus one, minus one gives a plus, so there is a minus in front, the energy is lower. So there is this, if you fix a volume, you see this. And then there is an interaction with an external field which is called age. In my notation here is age over two, in fact, just by, doesn't matter. Okay, so he interacts, he would like also to be in the same sign of age because it will make that smaller. And there is a boundary. If you fix a volume, then he interacts with those outside in the same way as with the neighbors, just that the outside is going to be considered as a fixed boundary conditions. So you, pre what you, you have something in an external bath. Okay, so this process, you have uh, this system, you have this probability measure. No, you just take e to the minus beta h. So beta is in, has the interpretation of one over the temperature. No? And you normalize this to be a probability measure. So you have z is simply the sum of everything, so that the sum of all these is a probability, is one. Okay? Uh, so it's clear that uh, if uh, beta is very small, they, all, they are very similar. So, because the age plays a much smaller role, so it's closer to a uniform thing, you know? Beta if, uh, equal to zero is infinite temperature, they're all the same. And, uh, but what is interesting is, uh, though it's very simple, it has a very uh, rich, structure, interesting behavior. When you take the thermodynamic limit, that means you make your, your box uh, grow to Z2, provided uh, beta is uh, large enough. That means for low temperature. So for low temperature, there is something from the infinite that comes to the origin. And uh, you, you are sitting at zero, and you know that the boundary, which is at infinity, what is a plus or a minus. That's what's called, I mean, there is a phase transition, there are two Gibbs measures, at two extrema, at least two Gibbs measures. So this process is, has a very long history. No, it was invented by Lenz, who was the advisor of Easy, and in his thesis, Easy, this is for already, his thesis, he considered the case dimension one, which is a Markov chain, and then, of course, since it's a Markov chain, he sees there is nothing too interesting, there is no phase transition. And, uh, but of course, maybe he conjectured, maybe not he conjectured that it would be uh, like that, but uh, fortunately he was, not, uh, he was not right, as, but anyway, it was very young, and his first, and then uh, first argument to show that there is this phase transition was given by Pyers, and then Onsager determined the, a lot of things. Uh, the, critical temperature, and there are a lot of things uh, I don't, I mean, this paper, this model has um, huge amount of uh, literature, I just say a few ones. So, what makes it interesting is exactly this. There is a critical value of beta, beta critical, such that if age is zero, then you have, uh, if you start with minus, uh, your boundary is minus, then it will go to a measure which is different than if the boundary is plus. I mean, it's one is minus the other, of course. Okay, so you have uh, these two phase transitions. So you can, you have the two measures, mu minus and mu plus. Two e Gibbs measures, extreme. And uh, these measures can be achieved not only by making the, the boundary conditions plus or minus, but also by switching an age, because when you have an age which is not zero, then you have a unique measure. The measure will be positive or negatively magnetized, depending on the sign of age. But when you send the age to zero to through positive values, you go to mu plus. If you send to zero through negative values, you go to mu minus. So it has this behavior and it has this spontaneous magnetization, that is, the magnetization, the expected value of the spin at zero, at the origin, when you have uh, in the mu plus. It's 
a positive number. It's not zero. Okay, so I just put it here a few, uh, since uh, this is for Jenna. Oh, yeah, I put some uh, simulations so that you see the simulations uh, have used already a lot because Van Sambe Farah allows to use his simulations without uh, a problem. So you have here uh, a high temperature, so you have very disordered, and you see this because the, his boundary conditions are, oops, I want to, on this part of the box, it's uh, say black, say black is plus. And on this part of the box, this is minus. Uh, that's you can see from the picture, but if you look inside, you don't see almost difference. No? And you put a little bit uh, uh, lower still, but high is still keeps the same. When you go to low temperatures, you see low temperature, you see this. Because the mu plus is small droplets of, of minus in a sea of pluses. And the mu minus is the reverse. So you see it's picture like that. There is a fluctuation that one knows that. So, so just to sh say that they are interesting things. Okay, we want to talk about dynamics. So this is a, what I said was just a measure. Equi uh, the, what was an equilibrium state, let us say a Gibbs measure. And in order to talk about dynamics, well, we are talking about the stochastic dynamics. And it's natural to think of stochastic dynamics which preserve this measure. Gibbs measures, this Gibbs measure. And from convenient, it's convenient also to have it time reversible. That means in equilibrium, you can run your process in one direction of time or backwards. It's the same distribution. Okay, so, and this can be achieved. The simplest examples are, uh, so you are making stochastic process in the configurations, which are, you fix a box, say, no, we are fixing a box. Outside there is some boundary, which is fixed, say. And I'm I am allowing only to change one spin at a time, just to make it simple. You could make other things. So there is these rates. So my process at random times, that means after exponential times with certain rates, the rates are given by called here C of X sigma sigma x, that means I flip the spin at x. That's the only thing that happens. At each time, at some random times, you flip the spins. And uh, so this sigma of x is equal to sigma outside x, at x has flipped. Okay, so this is a very simple evolution. I just need to say what are the c's, and you want this invariance, but if you, more than invariance, you want reversibility, then you need to solve this equation. This means that starting from sigma going to sigma of x, in probability, is the same flux starting sigma of x and going to sigma. That's what says this equation, so-called detailed balance. Okay, and you have many examples. The simplest one to state, uh, the simplest one is so-called the metropolis dynamics, which is the following. If your flip will decrease the energy, you flip with rate one. If it will increase, then you flip with rate which makes the equation correct. That means e to the minus beta, beta the difference in age. Okay? So that's a very simple example, but you can have others for which the result also works, that just that the computations you have to do. Okay? Uh, so a lot has been studied about, studied about metastability for this kind of stochastic dynamics, starting, say, maybe the first paper which put it in this framework was a paper of uh, Eduardo Jordão Neves and Roberto Schumann. Uh, I don't remember exact year. But, uh, and then many papers you have uh, in higher, in three dimension, um, Cerf and uh, Manzo, I think. Cerf and Manzo, but uh, you have, I mean, a huge literature, I said, I'm not making a complete uh, survey. But uh, most of these are looking at the case when the temperature goes to zero. Okay, beta goes to infinity. Because I said my process, I put in some limit, that is this k, and this k, go, there was uh, beta goes to infinity. In the regime of very low temperatures. And things are different than when you have a fixed temperature that you need to consider more the entropy. 
So the difference from uh, this kind of works and what we want to do is that we don't want beta go to infinity, we want the hysteresis loop. So I, I show the, the video, it's made better. So let's uh, see this. Um, so here I just have it, uh, I start, uh, blue is minus and uh, plus is white. In this simulation I don't have a fixed boundary condition, I have periodic boundary conditions. Um, and we start running this, so, yeah, put uh, these dynamics and it goes and uh, well it will take a long time in this state so at some point I accelerate the, the I accelerate the thing in order that we don't stay here. My, my video goes for one minute and something. Uh, but you see it stays like this for a long time and uh, it's quite boring, no? Uh, <laughs> it stays and it stays and uh, these droplets of uh, plus there are uh, not able to grow. At some point uh, something happens I hope it will not take much time and I have not accelerated enough. Um, yeah, something tried to grow but uh, you see not always, uh, not always successful. There is something already microscopic there but it's not, uh, I accelerated because otherwise, you know, uh, I speed it up and then it goes, goes, goes. Uh, at some point we stop a little bit. Ah, it's something happens. You know, and then this guy starts growing, but it's still it's uh, putting a little bit uh, faster. And uh, when it g gets like this, uh, I have accelerator because you already see what is happening. This guy is growing and growing and growing, and it will cover all the box, and then it will stay in this all the box something which would be the opposite. You know, so it grows the microscopic droplet, and it's all, that's all. Thank you. Okay. okay, so now I don't show this because this is the. Uh, okay, so we want to give a theorem related to this. So the important thing is comes um, there is this paper of uh, Roberto Schoman and Sainz Lossman in '98, which says that uh, they study the infinite volume of dynamics. At subcritical temperature, beta, beta is less, is bigger than beta critical, and age goes to zero. And they start with any initial measure which is stochastically smaller than mu minus. And they prove that there is a time scale e to the alpha of age, so times that grow exponentially as age goes, remember age is going to zero, such that if you take an observable and look your process, in a time which is e to the alpha h with alpha less than something, alpha critical, they see, the, uh, they give a precise information about the branch, that branch that we spoke, which is, uh, I mean, because the, um, the function is, the, there is not an analytical continuation, but if you take mu minus and then you extend it to, to negative, it, it is C infinite. Uh, this function, but anyway, so the, you give an extension, uh, something which is arbitrarily differentiable, CK for any K, so it with precision you want. And when alpha is bigger than alpha critical, then you go to the mu H, which is positive magnetized, because the H is positive, okay? And what is very uh, remarkable, they have this precise value of alpha, which is there. And this uh, value of alpha involves the, there is something there, M star, I already said what it is, is the spontaneous magnetization, the bet, bit I already said, there is this W, which is the integrate surface tension of uh, a unitary area of shape. So in order to, to say what does it mean, I would have to uh, say a little bit more. So you have something, so suppose you put, uh, no, let me, you put uh, any direction you choose, n is a unitary vector into dimension, and now you look at the following situation. You put a box, your box, you put a plus, a plus uh, here, 
and minus here. So if the inner product with, with n is positive, you put plus this boundary condition. I mean, the boundary is, you define the plus here and minus here, but you are taking the limit. And uh, uh, in this way, you can define a function, which is called the surface tension, which is somehow reflects the cost. Since my time is short, I'm not going to define it rigorously. Uh, but anyway, you can minus 1 over beta 1 over, say, xl minus yl, which means these points here. OK? And then the log of the partition function, where you have this this boundary and the, the one when you don't have, when everything, everybody is plus in the, in the zero, zero magnetic field. This is when you have phase transition. So there is this uh, function surface tension. It uh, tells the cost of having an interface. And what is important is that, uh, uh, well, when you look at uh, independent random variables, or when their correlation is not very big, and you study this thing here, say, put lambda, x in lambda, and you put here, say, sigma x, uh, my notation was this. So you take the average magnetization, and this goes to something which is a uh, magnetization at the end, say, beta h. If h is non-zero, this goes to there, quite almost surely by the ergodic theorem. And if you try to see the large deviations, nah, the probability that it's close to something else, this decays exponentially in the volume. What I call volume here is area, but it doesn't matter. It decays exponentially in the volume. Whenever you are outside the phase transition. When you are in the, region, in the situation that uh, beta is bigger than beta critical and age equal to zero, this is no longer true because, I mean, you have two states. So you just have to pay for the separation. So this d goes in the surface way, not with the volume. And if you, there is a lot of work here, d delicate work. And if you see what is, so you have this function, you, you, have, you see which is the curve that minimizes the, the integral of the surface tension, this is called the Wolf shape. And of course, you can, I mean, this, you can extend to a continuous function. This is the, the support of a uh, continuous a convex function, the tau, by the usual way. This is the support. So you have this notion of the Wolf shape, which is the optimal shape. If you want a droplet of plus inside a C of minus, the optimal way with less cost is this so-called Wolf shape, okay? So that's the guy who which enters there. Uh, and now I come to what we did using uh, all what uh, they have done because, okay, so, uh, no, because uh, maybe I should explain a little bit more because uh, what, wh what's missing, no? Because here you were saying they, they look at the scales, alpha over age, where our, uh, age goes to infinity, so they don't get to the transition. We want to understand a transition. So somehow we would like to pin uh, the transition time from metastable to stable. So th this gives the branch, but doesn't tell about uh, uh, our lifetime in a finite world, because metastability is really in the finite volume. So that's uh, what we want to see. And so we take a box. Uh, we are going to consider age goes to zero, and b beta is larger than beta critical, but fixed. And this box has to be large enough in order to, to, to be able to, to make this interesting. And, uh, and uh, what it has to be? Well, I mean, if you examine this this uh, uh, free energy function, you see that uh, the cost, maybe uh, since my time is, uh, I'm a little bit late, but I started uh, three minutes late. Yeah. Okay, now I realize that I started. Okay, so I, 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 I forgot that I started late. Anyway, uh, so uh, the, 
the cost, the cost to have a drop, let's say I have a, a box that I don't care too much, but I have minus outside. And the cost of having a droplet here, a droplet here of uh, plus, no, I want to, 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 to measure. But uh, you know, I, I mean, if I didn't have the field, my cost is just the surface. But my field helps, helps to have an age. So the cost uh, to have this, this uh, some droplet of plus in the box of minus, this box in this uh, scale which I said, one over age, is easily is, is seen. It's already given from the, the, there is a lot of things to, to do this, but we didn't do this, was already done, okay? It's given by this uh, W, which I, uh, which I already had, the length, and there is something which uh, from the field that happen, helps. That is uh, um, H times the volume, times M star, because the field gives you this, wants you to be at M star, so you discount this. So this is this function there, very, uh, this parabola, parabola here, and this has a maximum at BC, which is this guy here, and the maximum value is this. This tells that if you have a droplet which is smaller than BC in, shape, it will shrink. And if it's bigger, it will grow. That's uh, from the energy, uh, f free energy aspect. And this A is the, the maximum value, so you would expect that the time it takes to create this is e to the, to, to, so to what we had before. So I can now uh, say this. Um, so B critical is this maximum, and we are going to consider our restricted dynamics, some set of configurations which have to allow a little bit bigger droplets. And uh, this set R of all, all, well, I, so if you have in a minus, uh, your boundary condition is minus, outside you have minus, so you can characterize transform your spin dynamics into contours because there is the dual in the Z2, you, you, the contours. The contours is what you have in mind, everything which separates a plus and a minus. So you make this picture very complicated with many contours, but there is the natural notion of external contour. It's something which outside you don't have another one bigger, okay? So the R is defined in terms of the all contours in your configuration except some tiny, those stupid, small white things that we didn't care, uh, can be included in a certain number, which is, uh, I'm not very precise, but it's smaller than one over h, of disjoint wolf shapes, which total length is at most b plus. What is b plus is a little bit bigger than bc, okay? And there is another set of configurations there that I don't describe now because uh, I want to state the result, but it will come only in the proof, okay? So, which are the configurations which have some contour, uh, uh, not uh, smaller than B minus. B minus and B plus are symmetric with respect to B, BC, close to BC. This is not very important to, to be too precise. So you have something slightly now R contains things slightly supercritical in some sense. And okay, here is just definition of uh, mixing time, which is a usual thing. When you start from anything, you get close to the equilibrium. Now the equilibrium is this mu with an H. So it's, okay, and then the theorem we can state is this, okay? So I'm going to put, to give a result which fits to the frame which I said after, uh, before, pathwise approach. So I if you take, so beta is anything larger than beta critical. If you take your box large, sufficiently large, so there is this B maximum, has to be somehow big, but uh, not much, you know. And uh, you consider 
initial measure, which there is a large uh, family which can be allowed. But one then, one then is to take the one with minus boundary condition, with a magnetic field H, the boundary condition is minus, but the field is positive, and restrict it to this set R. Okay? Then we say that there exists a random time, TH, which is asymptotically exponential, as we wanted. Uh, uh, it gives the order of a magnitude, so it gives this e to the beta a divided by h in a logarithmic way. So this is different than the e to the alpha. It's larger, but i tell in a minute why. Okay? And if you look at the time averages, no, up to up to this time, you, you see the mu restricted. As we, so the mu restricted is a metastable state. And if you look uh, bigger, uh, uh, at time th, you are already uh, very close to the true equilibrium. So we have, this is a theorem which states exactly what I had mentioned as a pathwise approach. Uh, about this time th, I didn't say very well how it's obtained, and that's uh, the trick point. Because with Roberto Schoeman in 97, I was visiting uh, him, and we, I, uh, I tried a lot, and I also, he was also thinking uh, how to get this kind of result using for t some heating time, the escape time from a set, because we were accustomed to do that. And uh, that's, I don't know if it's possible to do, but the nice idea, which it comes from this paper of uh, Bianchi and uh, Godelier is not to look at uh, as an exit time exactly. Okay, so this time th is the following. You, your process, I mean, these sets R and S, they are like that maybe, just to visualize. Uh, you have your R here, your S is somewhere here. So this is R, this is S. Okay, though the plus is here, the, the minus is here but they have a, a, an, no empty intersection. And what happens that you look at uh, your process and you allow it to go to, you allow it to exit from R, but when it is in S, you know, it goes from, you allow it to go to S, out, outside uh, the other thing. But when it's in S, when it's out, you kill it with a certain rate. That has to be properly chosen. Not too small, but not too big either, otherwise. And uh, you look, you kill it with a certain rate, and when it's killed, that's your t lambda. So your t lambda is going to be uh, the time which it was in R plus something which is an exponential with a certain rate which you give. It's okay, provided you can prove that the behavior, because nobody said how I have to get my exponi asymptotic exponential time, just I have to get it. So uh, in this way, you get a, a time which is asymptotically exponential and everything works. And the good thing of this is because you are able to explore um, potential theory more in this sense. You are able to exp explore, explore capacity and use it to estimate the main, the main difficulty to prove this theorem is to say that the relaxation time within R is much smaller than the mixing, this time T mixing that you want. So you want to control the spectral gap of the uh, process restricted to R. And this is much, it's a lot of work, but it's, uh, it's possible to do with the techniques that they, they invented, which is called soft capacity, soft measures. And it resisted to all efforts which we have been uh, done. I don't know, I started thinking about it in 97, maybe I stopped at some moment, but when uh, Alex came here, uh, sort of, uh, and it took a lot of time, but it's nice, that uh, that's a different idea, which uh, I think it was not explored before, uh, the first time that, uh, was exploring is in their paper, uh, the paper that I mentioned. Uh, of course, it had to, to adapt to our situation. It had to be extended, and this extension was done 
by Bianchi, uh, Godelier, and Milanesi. But uh, the idea was already in the, in the first paper. Um, I think that I can stop now because it's my time almost, so that's uh, in case there are questions. I can